In this lesson, we're going to foliar feed our citrus trees, mangoes, avocados, passion fruit vines, palms, camellias, pretty much all of our non-deciduous plants and trees within the garden. All of those plants that still carry healthily their leaves through the winter months. At the end of this lesson, we're gonna be harvesting lemons together and squeezing them to last the entire year through. Well, let's get started. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants, and I'm excited to share that Ivory Organics has a buy one, get one free sale right now on the 11.8 ounce bags of the super and premium blend, six macros plus fertilizers, and these fertilizers are gonna be the basis of the foliar nutritional sprays that we're gonna be using in today's demonstration. Let me share with you more closely that the Six Macros Plus fertilizer, unlike pretty much all the other fertilizers that exist on the market that just focus on nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, this fertilizer delivers the plants all of the macronutrients plants need for optimal health and performance. The six macronutrients include nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, sulfur, and calcium. Nitrogen is important for greening and growth, phosphorus typically for flowers and fruit, potassium for disease resistance and root development, Magnesium is important towards the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, as well as a lot of enzymatic reactions. Sulfur is another important greening element, and calcium can be found in the cell walls of all the plants. High abundance macronutrients, important for um, optimal plant health. In addition to it, it has a lot of micronutrients as well, which include iron, manganese, zinc, copper, and boron. The Super Blend, this again, is a buy one, get one free sale going on on the 11.8 ounce bag. One tablespoon per gallon of water makes over 20 gallons of liquid fertilizer that can be used in addition to broadcasting um, over the soil. And then there's the premium blend, which also has the NPK MGSCA, but in lower percentages. So this here is the premium blend and this one over here, the super blend. They're both right now buy one, get one free while supplies last. Their products are also available in larger bags, but these are not on sale currently. These are four pounds and make 120 gallons, again, at a rate of a tablespoon per gallon of water. And now let's review a few helpful articles that'll help you better understand the value of doing foliar nutritional sprays in your garden. Aside from just hearing my story, let's do a little bit of research together. Check these out. So this first article I wanna share with you is titled Foliar Fertilization and Citriculture. And this is published by the University of Florida. And if you take a look down here, it is Citrus Industry, April 2014. And let's read. Foliar fertilizer application is certainly not a new concept to the citrus industry. For more than five decades, foliar fertilization of citrus has been recommended to correct, and these are some micro elements, zinc, manganese, boron, copper, and magnesium, which is a macronutrient deficiency. It is now common knowledge in agriculture that properly nourished crops may tolerate insect pests and disease. Currently, with the introduction of citrus greening in Florida, many growers and production managers consider foliar fertilization a key factor to stimulate the natural defense mechanisms of their trees to induce pest and disease tolerance and to improve fruit yields and fruit quality. Foliar fertilizer application is highly efficient because the materials are targeted to areas where they can be directly absorbed into the plant. It's not intended to replace soil applied fertilization of the macronutrients such as nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. Foliar applications of other macronutrients such as calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. So here they're discussing those important macronutrients and micronutrients, again, zinc, manganese, copper, boron, and molybdenum, have proven to be an excellent means for satisfying citrus tree requirements. Foliar nutrition is proven to be useful under prolonged periods of wet conditions, drought conditions, calcareous soil, cold weather, or any other condition that decreases the tree's ability to take up nutrients when there is a demand. Foliar feeding may be effectively utilized when a nutritional deficiency is diagnosed. Foliar application is absolutely the quickest method of getting the most nutrients into plants. However, if the deficiency can be observed on the tree, then the crop has already lost some potential yield. 
application when the weather is hot above 80 degrees should be avoided. And this is um, a disclaimer warning to make sure that if there's hot conditions expected that week, do not foliar feed your plants. The other article I want to share with you is titled The Natural Resources Fact Sheet on Plant Nutrients, Specifically Potassium. And this is information compiled by the California Fertilizer Foundation. And if we take a look here, you can see the credit is the California Foundation for Agriculture in the Classroom. And if I turn the page, what I want to share with you is the importance of potassium in establishing the tolerance of the plant in weather extremes, both heat and cold. And this here reads how potassium functions in plants. Specifically, it helps retard crop diseases, builds cellulose needed for stock and stem strength, aids in photosynthesis and food function, increases root growth and improves drought resistance, produces grain rich and starch necessary for plant protein formation, reduces water loss and wilting, and assists many enzyme actions. So now let's prepare the foliar feed solution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start here with the super blend, just to demonstrate the difference between the super and the premium blend. We're going to take a tablespoon of the product. As you can see, it's very fine and readily soluble. It's not 100% soluble as again, it's organic. And so there's gonna be parts of it that do not quite break down, but I want you to see how this mixes into water and you can see how it's breaking down and adding some color to the solution as it works its way into the solution. I did this right before we started this lesson about an hour ago and you can see now if we mix it, the solution has turned into kind of a muddy solution here. And we're gonna also stir this up and you can see the difference. It's the exact same product, one tablespoon in each of these solutions. This has to yet break down, but this one here is pretty much broken down. You're gonna wanna make sure it sits in water for at least an hour and it's fine even if you have it sit for even up to 24 hours to make sure that those elements break down into the water solution. Over here, we've got the premium blend fertilizer and we're going to take our tablespoon measuring spoon and we can add that. You can see that this is not as fine as a super blend but will break down over time as well. Again, you're going to want to keep it in the solution for at least an hour and even up to 24 hours and you can see this solution that we did just before the video is now starting to break down into the solution. A little bit darker compared to if you immediately add it to water, it doesn't quite break down. You, you got to give it time to basically break down and dissolve into the solution. What we're going to do next is we're simply going to take our container. I'm using now a washcloth that's been rinsed and that I use for gardening purposes only. And I'm simply going to put it over my empty container and filter the parts of the product that have not yet quite dissolved. I wanna make sure that it's thoroughly stirred. And we can now add it to our empty container. All of the particulates that have not dissolved into water, as you can see here, will be rinsed off and also reintroduced into the garden, or you can also integrate into your compost heat to make sure that all of the elements are there. The filtered solution can now be added. And again, the goal is one tablespoon per gallon of water. This is not a gallon, but we do have a gallon over here. You can see my tank sprayer. I filled it up with water up into this level. If I shake it, you can see the water rocking back and forth. And we're gonna add now the six macros plus filtered fertilizer to my tank sprayer. And now I have a gallon of foliar nutritional spray to apply to all of my plants and trees within the garden. Another easy way to apply the product is you can put it into your handheld sprayer. So if you've got a clean spray bottle, you can also add your spray that way and just bottles such as this one. And lastly, you can also use a watering can as well. I've got two gallons of water in my watering can and we can take 
Again, since the ratio is one tablespoon per gallon, we're gonna put two tablespoons of fertilizer to the container. Ideally, again, you're gonna to wanna to wait at least an hour, up to 24 hours. Make sure the solution works its way in. Make sure also that you remove the end since we didn't filter it. So you're gonna to wanna to take off your watering can end. And now you can simply water your plants like so. But again, only after the solution has been in contact with water for about an hour. So we started off by talking about the importance of foliar feeding your plants, especially during weather extremes. You can foliar feed your plants just to know about once a month or every other month, just to make sure your plants have all of the macro and micronutrient nutrition. And it's a way again, as we already said, the fastest way to get those elements into the plant as the plant leaves are like sponges absorbing it. In regards to weather extremes, such as the coldest weeks and months of winter, the roots are less functional. The roots are damp and cold and the metabolism at that level is very slow in regards to nutrient uptake. So making sure that those leaves have all of those macro and micronutrients is a way to ensure that the plant will come out of winter with a head start compared to those plants that do not gain from foliar feeding nutrition during those winter months. In regards to feeding your plants, you can continuously feed your plants during the entire year. Again, just be careful to avoid those weather high hot extremes over 80 degrees as the chemicals on the leaf could result in a chemical burn to those leaves. So you gotta be careful to avoid temperatures in excess of 80 degrees. So if you know you're anticipating hotter weather the week of or those next couple of weeks that you're foliar feeding your plants, be sure to also maybe rinse those leaves off um, after you do the foliar feeding. And the best time of day for foliar feeding is in the morning hours so that the dew and the moisture of the evening doesn't wash away that foliar feed application that you've done for your plants. Well, let's start off over here with our camellia. If you take a look over here, here we are now the first week of January and you can see there's some pink, coloration that's coming out of this camellia. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to now just begin spraying the plant like so. And you're gonna to wanna to also come from underneath the plant and we're gonna get the underside of the leaves as well. And we'll continue. Also applying it to the Kentia palm tree, which is somewhat of a rare variety of palm. And again, top of the leaves as well as the underside of the leaf. And let's continue. Hibiscus. Your loquat trees. Your bananas. Avocados. Gardenias. And even your blueberries. And do you remember the size of the passion fruit vine from the September passion fruit cutting giveaway? And this vine that you see behind me that's probably supporting hundreds and hundreds of fruit is all on a single vine. And I'm hoping you can see how we um, basically trained it to hold on to our light canopy and it's pretty much growing all the way up towards the fireplace. Well, we've cut it down a size. Check out how small it is. The roots are right here where I'm reaching, where I'm pointing and the vine reaches about, I'd say maybe three tops, four feet in length. And you can see this is all of the new growth since the September pruning for that annual giveaway. And even the passion fruits will benefit from a fuller nutritional feed, like so. In addition to you over here is the Lisbon lemon. And again, we're gonna get the top and the bottom of all of these leaves. Let me get my chair to get to the highest and tallest branches.
You may have noticed around the entire garden that all of the tree trunks and lower branches of the trees have been brushed on with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard protection against damaging summer sunburn as well as winter sun scald and insects and rodents for use on roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs for use in organic production, healthier than latex paint and tar-based products, now Omri listed for organic use. Also available in colors brown and green if you're looking for a more natural look, and we're proud to share that the products are now available in Australia for same-day delivery with Amazon. So be sure to check that out, and I'll put the link down below. But last thing I wanna share with you is for your deciduous trees, such as this fig tree that I have here in my garden. For all of your deciduous plants and trees in your garden, such as your fig trees, your pomegranates and peaches and plums and so forth, your plants and trees that have lost their leaves for the winter, do not feed them, not at the soil level and not at the foliar level, and just allow them to enjoy their dormancy period uninterrupted. Well, now let's get on to harvesting some lemons. Let's get started. Another important lesson I want to share with you between Eureka and then the Meyer lemons that we're going to be harvesting is that Eureka lemons hold onto the tree significantly longer, anywhere from two at a minimum to upwards of about eight months on the tree. The Meyer lemon, on the other hand, as soon as they're ripe, within about 30 to 60 days, they begin to rot. And, that, and that's the importance of harvesting and preserving your Meyer lemons, which is what we're going to demonstrate shortly. What I also want to share with you is, it is, is in regards to transportation. The Eureka lemon, which is also more yellow in color compared to the Meyer lemon. And these here are grown on standard rootstock. And again, my reach is eight feet and these trees I'm easily able to contain between six and seven feet. Notice how much more compact the branches are to one another and the density of the fruit within the branches. If we pick the Meyer lemon, again, you can quickly see that the skin is more orange in color as research supports the fact that the Meyer lemon is a cross between a lemon and a mandarin orange. So it's got some orange sweetness integrated into the tartness of a lemon. And the reason you don't find Meyer lemons as prevalent in the marketplace, and the reason that they also probably rot on the tree a lot faster than the Eureka and Lisbon variety of lemons is because the skin is so thin relative to the Eureka and the Lisbon lemons. And let's check that out. If we take a look here, Meyer lemon compared to the Eureka lemon. They may look similar, but the thinness in the Meyer lemon is the reason that you typically won't find Meyer lemons in your local grocery store as they don't transport well and they don't store well. This is an advantage if you actually enjoy the taste of the sweeter than Eureka and Lisbon variety lemons. This is a reason to incorporate Meyer lemons within the garden landscape. Well, let's get to harvesting. Here, Victoria. So you can see we barely made a dent in the harvest. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna squeeze these lemons. We're gonna put them in pitchers and containers of lemon juice. And then over the next few days, we're gonna continuously make ice cubes out of the lemon juice that'll then go into Ziploc store bags that we'll then get to enjoy throughout winter, spring, and hopefully enough lemon juice to help sustain this family through summer with now flavored waters, in addition to marinades for salads, in addition to um, a whole bunch of foods that we integrate lemon juice into. If you found this lesson informative and educational, be sure to give us a thumbs up. And most importantly, if you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to stay informed of all of these educational lessons as soon as they become made available. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all Happy gardening. Happy gardening. <laughs> Happy gardening. <laughs> and wishing you all. Happy, Happy gardening. gardening. Happy gardening.